I don't know what you're manifesting specifically unless I've had a session with you, but I do know that you're probably a lot more on track than you think you are. Today, I am feeling called to create this video to encourage you when it comes to persisting and not checking the 3D, your physical reality, for something to appear that you are affirming or visualizing for. Hello, my loves, it's Gigi, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. We talk all about the law of assumption, mindset, spirituality, and so much more. We're the Journey Fam. I always share techniques that I love and ways to shift your mindset so that you don't even need to be relying on techniques at all. By the end of this video, you're going to walk away feeling 1,000 times more confident and reassured, but it's up to you. It is your responsibility to actually use that surge of confidence to your advantage. About six months ago, I made a video all about making persisting easy and fun and effortless, and I will link it above for you. But I wanted to make a follow-up video to give you some tangible things I wrote, and I want this to be practical for you, really practical. I'm really excited to have you guys apply this. I'm sorry I'm like screaming at you in this video, but I need this to get through to you. I need this to get through and actually sink in because we're not wasting any more time. We're not. If you're part of the Journey Fam, if you're watching these videos, you're not. You're not allowed to waste any more time wavering and doubting and looking for empirical evidence. If you're going to believe this stuff, give it a fair shot. Give it an actual try. Anyways, without further ado, here are the tips. Tip number one, decide on a lucky charm that you will be seeing frequently throughout your day that will remind you that you are living in the end. I want you to designate something in your physical 3D reality that you see a lot of or that you're wearing like a necklace that will symbolize to you you're getting what you want. You are in the right reality. You are on the right timeline. And anytime anything starts to bother you, you're just going to look at that physical reminder and be like, oh, wait, no. I'm actually completely on track. I simply decided that I'm having this thing in my reality. Therefore, I'm having it and it's inevitable and I'm living in the end. I already have it actually. I'm celebrating it. Congratulations to me. You're just going to trigger a stream of thoughts in your favor every time you see this lucky charm. And it could be something like press on nails. Why don't you make your phone screensaver something that uniquely symbolizes to you that you already have what you want and you're living in the end and this is your lucky charm. Like that is something you look at all the freaking time throughout your day. So use this lucky charm trick to your advantage. It's so easy. Tip number two is kind of an expansion of the idea behind tip number one and that is curating what you can control in your environment and in your daily life habits to support the identity of the new version of you who has this thing you are manifesting. Create an environment for yourself that caters to your new self and not your old self. Let's be real. You complaining, you venting all the time to your friends or holding space constantly for their negativity and not setting boundaries or going on social media and using it to self-sabotage or trigger old stories or listening to sad music. Not that you can't enjoy sad music, but like music that's triggering the old story and you know it does, or watching that really sad movie. Set a boundary for yourself out of love. Curate what you can control in your environment. Listen to an uplifting podcast instead of watching the depressing movie or listening to that really sad song. You're not going to be able to fully control every single aspect of your environment all the time, and I don't think it's really healthy to feel like you need to micromanage everything around you, but you can give yourself a hand, you can give yourself an advantage, and that will support you in persisting. And it will encourage you because you'll be able to persist with less resistance, with less friction. Here's a great way to think about it. You want to make persisting in the story of living in the end easy, attractive, and highly visible. And you want to make dwelling in the old story and the negativity invisible, repulsive, and difficult. This is from James Clear's Atomic Habits book when he talks about supporting yourself through building positive habits and making negative habits really unattractive. Neville Goddard talks about how we must die to the old self to be born to the new self. 
I'm paraphrasing. And it'll be a lot easier to persist if we can give ourselves a leg up in that way. So what can that look like? Listening to music that either triggers a really positive stream of thoughts related to your desire or just puts you in a really calm, neutral, chill state like binaural beats or listening to affirmations or doing quick little visualization meditations throughout the day or avoiding certain conversations with people. doesn't mean you have to avoid the person, but just being really conscious about what you're talking about and not complaining. And I keep bringing up James Clear and Atomic Habits because I just revisited it again recently, but it's really relevant here because he talks about how the small, tiny, incremental changes that we make compound over time to give us these massive results that we're really excited about. So you taking a break from the heartbreak music and the social media stalking could actually compound to completely shift your energetic state in a way that you can't even recognize on a day-to-day basis because they're just small habits that you're changing. And then before you know it, you're more receptive to identifying opportunities that bring about your manifestation so much faster. And you're in the identity of the person you can actually receive and enjoy what you're trying to get. Tip number three on how to persist more seamlessly and to make it fun and effortless, gratitude rampaging. Do it in the morning, do it at night, do it throughout the day if you can. Speak it aloud, preferably if you have the chance to be in the car alone or have the house to yourself or you're on a walk or whatever. I don't know if you've listened to Abraham Hicks' Rampages, but she's just going on this stream of positivity and gratitude. And it's like the stream of consciousness building and compounding, just uplifting your spirits so much. Do that, but then also incorporate in the rampage and at the end of the rampage, in the past tense, the thing that you want. Integrating it into the list of things that you are already really, truly grateful for in the same way that if you were scripting and you were writing about all these things that you love happening in your life and then you also casually, nonchalantly incorporate, and I'm really glad I'm in my dream relationship. It's been going so well. He's amazing to me, blah, 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 blah. Like that's how you would get yourself so familiar and comfortable with that being your reality. That's what you're doing, but just rampaging it verbally allowing yourself to just get in that gratitude zone because it really activates a part of you that makes persisting feel like it's second nature. Like you just love living in the end because it's who you are now and that's that. You already have it. It's already done. It already exists and you're grateful for it and you're adding it to your gratitude rampage for that reason to allow your subconscious to finally accept that this is part of our reality and it has no choice but to materialize because That's how this freaking reality works. An example could be you're just grateful for how beautiful the weather was today and you had a really amazing breakfast and your coworkers were extra friendly to you and you got to FaceTime your best friend and she shared some great news with you and then you got to walk your dog and you got to have an awesome dinner and have a nice cup of tea and cozy up in your pajamas and you're so grateful and you also are relishing in the fact that you got accepted to your top university that you wanted to get accepted to You're weaving it into the gratitude rampage so that you can't even tell what is ordinary and real versus what is extraordinary. You want to make it so normal and natural to your mind that these things that you want are actually just something you're already grateful for. And it's not that crazy. It's not that outrageous to be wanting these things. Anyways, that is all for today, folks. Let me know in the comments which of these three tips you think you're going to try if you've tried these before and what success you've had. I can't wait to make more videos like this with very practical techniques for you guys. And obviously you guys know how to reach me. My links are in the description and I'm so excited to see you again soon. Feel free to leave questions and video ideas in the comments below too. And welcome to the journey fam if this is your first time here. Bye!